so now we're going to get into something that we touched on before matter but i didn't discuss it in detail so we're going to get into a bit of detail in this section about matter and the different forms of it so as i said before matter is anything that has mass and volume right so anything that has mass and takes up space so basically what we're talking about here is pretty much anything that makes up materials all right so what we're going to look at is um, something again we talked about earlier properties of substances and remember we said that when we're talking about the properties of a particular substance we're talking about those particular defining characteristics that we can observe about a particular substance all right so when it comes to pro um so that's basically the definition of properties a characteristic of a substance right and as i said before each substance has their own unique set of properties that would be characteristic of that substance and therefore you can use that set of properties to identify the particular substance all right now when it comes to properties there are two types you have what are known as physical properties and chemical properties so we're going to look at what we mean by physical properties first and basically it's a property that can be observed without changing the composition or structure of the substance all right so here are some examples of um, physical properties we have taste we have color we have physical state we have melting points and we have boiling points and I'm quite sure you can think of other examples which fits this definition so basically those properties, those characteristics that you can observe without the substance undergoing any chemical change. Those are what we call physical properties. All right. Um, so just to give an example, let's look at this particular substance, chlorine. And one thing we know about chlorine is that it is 2.4 times heavier than air. Another property of chlorine is that it has a yellowish green color. Um, the odor is disagreeable and it has a melting point of minus 101 degrees Celsius and it also has a boiling point of minus 34.6 degrees Celsius. So these are all characteristics associated with chlorine and these characteristics can be observed without chlorine undergoing any chemical reaction. So in other words, the chlorine is not reacting with anything while we are observing these particular characteristics okay um so that's basically um, physical properties so now we're going to move on to chemical properties and when it comes to chemical properties the definition is basically any change or any change that can be observed which involves or any i should say any property that can be observed where there's a chemical reaction that is taking place so as stated here Properties that, when observed, involves changing the substance into another substance. So what we're talking about here is a situation where there's a chemical change and you're making observations as to the nature of that chemical change and that would be a particular characteristic of that particular substance. So that's what chemical properties are all about. So again, going back to the chlorine example, we're going to look at some examples of chemical properties one is that it will not burn in oxygen another one is that it will support the combustion of other substances another one is that it can be used as a bleaching agent the next one is that it can be used as a water disinfectant and then finally and this one is actually a very dramatic case is that it can react with sodium to form sodium chloride that reaction actually is a very explosive um, reaction generating a lot of heat and light right so collectively these would be the chemical properties associated with the substance chlorine all right so that's basically the difference between chemical and physical properties so this list here is a list of chlorine along with other elements or I should say along with other substances and different physical and chemical properties as you can see here we talked about chlorine already um, so let me just move on to water, which we also talked about. Water is colorless, water is odorless and tasteless. It's a liquid um, under normal room temperature conditions with a melting point of zero degrees and a boiling point of 100 degrees. All right. And you see some other descriptors in terms of the physical properties of, um, 
other substances, sugar, acetic acid, and so on. So you can look at these on your own, but these are all physical properties associated with these different substances. Okay, now if you understand the difference between physical and chemical properties, then understanding physical changes and chemical changes should be a breeze, all right? So let's go through this, physical changes. Firstly, we're going to talk about that, and then we're going to talk about chemical changes. Now, whenever we're talking about the physical change that a substance undergoes, we're talking about a change where there is no change that would be observed in the composition of the substance, all right? So the change that we're talking about here would be something like changes in shape, change in um, size, change in density, um, or changes in state of matter. Um, let me explain that briefly. So when we're talking about states of matter, there are three main states that materials can have, right? We have the solid state, the liquid state, and the gaseous state, right? So whenever you hear the term state of matter, they're talking about those three states. So basically what we're saying is that if you have a substance that will be converted from a liquid to a gas, then that is a physical change of state, but there's no change in the composition. In fact, let me give you some examples of physical changes. Um, tearing of paper, right? That is an example of a physical change because even though you're making a change where you're making a bigger piece of paper into smaller pieces, the paper does not change. It is still paper. It's not being converted into anything else, all right? So that's one example of a physical change. Another example of a physical change is ch changing ice into water, right? Ice is solid water, and water is in a liquid form, and basically that's the only change that takes in place. Um, there's no chemical change. In other words, ice is H2O, liquid water is H2O, so there's no change in the composition, all right? So that's another example of a physical change. Um, changing water into steam. Again, very similar to what we talked about here. The only difference is that you're going from the liquid, liquid state to the gaseous state. And again, there's no change in the composition. It was H2O in the liquid state. It is still H2O in the gaseous state. So therefore, that's another example of a physical change. And then finally, heating platinum wire. Now, heating platinum wire until it becomes hot, that's a physical change. Basically, the only thing you're changing is the temperature of the wire, but there's no reaction taking place. So therefore, we call that a physical change, right? Again, no change in composition, only in this case, change in temperature. So in each of these cases, what you'll observe is that there are no new substances formed, right? Whatever the substance that you start off with before the physical change, it is fundamentally the same thing after the physical change. There may be changes in the size or changes in the state, of matter or even change in temperature but you're not changing the composition of the substance all right so that's basically what is involved in physical changes okay so we're going to move on now to chemical changes and in the case of chemical change you have the creation of a new substance from the previous substance when it undergoes the change and therefore as a result a composition change occurs, right? The composition of the new material or the new substance is different from that of the old substance, all right? So that's what happens in a chemical change. So for example, let's say you heat a piece of copper wire in air and you see a change in color. Now copper will have a char characteristic sh um, reddish brown, shiny appearance. And then if you heat it long enough, you're going to see a black material that is produced, right? And this is one of the things that you'd look for in a chemical change. If you see a change in color, then more than likely that would be a chemical change, all right? So we can represent these changes using this shorthand representation here, where this represents the copper metal. These are the two copper atoms. These are the two oxygen atoms. And when they react, they form copper two oxide. And therefore, as a result, you're forming a new substance, right? You're forming a new substance which would be completely different from the copper and the oxygen that is formed, all right? Um, they would have different properties, the new substance compared to the old substance, all right? So this is an example of what we call a chemical change, right? So just to emphasize what's happening here, the composition is changing. So that's why we know it's a chemical change, right? The original copper is 100% by mass. 
but the product here, copper 2 oxide, is made up of copper and oxygen, and these are the percentages. 79.4% copper by mass, and 20.1% oxygen by mass, all right? So that's basically what happens in this particular chemical change. And that is what happens in every chemical change, right? In every chemical change, the new substance is formed, which is of different properties compared to the original substances that would be reacting, all right? Um, and as I said before, the new substance has a different color compared to the original copper. And that's one of the things that you would look for in a chemical change, a change in color. There are other things you look for too, but for sure, if you get a chemical change, or I should say if there's a difference, a change in color, then you can know that that is a chemical change. Now, the copper 2 oxide is actually made up of what we call ions. And we talk, we're going to talk about ions later on, but basically... They're made up of copper ions and oxide ions. Ions are basically particles that are charged. So I won't go into that right now. We'll talk about that in a later chapter, right? But the difference is, of course, between the products and the reactants in this case, is that the copper and oxygen do not contain any of the ions that you'd find in the product. So this basically is further emphasizing that this is a chemical change, a chemical change has occurred all right okay so the next thing we're going to talk about here is um, another definition very important fundamental um, topic when it comes to chemistry and that is elements so let me define in fact yes let me stop here for the time being actually and um, the next video is where we're going to get into a discussion of elements all right until next time